I'm not immune to millennial cringe because I read Harry Styles fanfiction, but she wrote Hillary Clinton fanfiction, the billionaire boyfriend with the private jet. I was molded by BuzzFeed feminism. This is a spoiler review. Hi, welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm Lena and today we're ranting about Romantic Comedy by Curtis Sittenfeld. I feel like you're gonna be like, oh, another rant review about romance? Like, do you have a problem with romance? And I really don't have anything against romance. If anything, this review is more in defense of romance than anything. Like, I love a good romance, I don't read it all the time, but it's part of a balanced literary diet. And I know what a great romance novel can do for the soul, like it can mend you and also absolutely fucking destroy you. And I love a good rom-com, like 13 going on 30, that's Mark Ruffalo in that movie, let's not talk about it. So you can imagine my surprise and my disappointment when a book called Romantic Comedy turned out to be neither romantic nor comedic or funny in any way shape or form and that it was kind of receiving praise for somewhat elevating romance and i'm not even anti-critic like i do respect the professional reviewers but if there's one thing that irks me is critics who aren't into genre like making themselves the ar arbiters of who is making an elevated version of a genre that they don't even master the conventions of. But I'll get back to that first. Let's dive into what the book is about. So it's about Sally. She's a comedy writer in her late 30s and she has a shit love life as most rom-com protagonists do. But she has a very fulfilling job. She works for this sketch comedy show called The Night Owls. Um, and it airs every Saturday evenings and they have celebrity guests if that reminds you of anything and we basically meet her the week that this celebrity guest is noah who is this kind of like former teen heartthrob gone more indie pop and also gone balding and that also reminds me of someone <laughs> and he has this hit uh called making love in july and she doesn't really like rate him or anything she he thinks he's kind of silly and she doesn't really care for her music because she likes uh, the Indigo Girls. At the comedy writing job she has, she has these male co-workers who are comedy writers but they're also playing the sketches and there's like a pattern of them dating the very like super hot female celebrities that come onto the show and she basically has this sketch idea that talks about how the reverse would never work, like a kind of mid a female comedy writer could never pull a hot male celebrity guest. So she pitches this idea and Noah is kind of initially super hostile to it so it doesn't endear him to her but they end up kind of getting closer throughout the week and preparing the live show. Um, they like work on a sketch together and they hang out in between rehearsals and stuff like that until the after show party where he almost tries to make a move on her but she says something kind of rude and it shuts it down and kills the whole thing. Then we fast forward to two years later and it's the pandemic and they start emailing each other out of the blue um, and yeah they talk about their lives and they go back and forth for a little while before they realize that they want to be together and during the pandemic she's in Kansas with her stepfather and she decides because it's dangerous to fly and there aren't many flights anyway that she's going to drive from Kansas all the way to California to hook up with him. So she does, they hook up, uh, they live in domestic bliss for a few days until they get caught by a paparazzi. She has a bit of a freak out about how like it would be to be the public girlfriend of a celebrity and she also like is freaking out that like She's not really his type and she's insecure about that and she also freaks out because it's moving quite fast like he's asking her to move in with her and she's like no but i love my independence and so they break up it's the third act breakup and then they get back together because her stepfather who's quite elderly 
gets COVID and she has to go back to Kansas as fast as possible. So he swoops in with the private jet and the hat home doctor and they reconcile over uh, helping this old man shower. And then uh, there's like this epilogue where they're together and they're happy and they elope to get married. And she writes this uh, or horrendous uh, white feminist film. So I've kept it pretty broad and I feel like I was kind of mean at the ending but I did like some things about the book. First of all it shows the inner workings of SNL quite well. Um, they really go into the nitty-gritty details of what a week at SNL is like, how they write the sketches, how they pitch them, which sketches get picked, the kind of the history of the head writer and like um, how the rehearsals work and which sketches go live and which are cut for time. And I love TV and I'm kind of interested in production so I love this kind of behind the scenes look at it and it kind of gave me FOMO in a way, like that was really well written and well researched and it makes me think like if I ever go to New York ever again like I would so want to attend SNL, that seems like a fun thing to do. The first part where they're at SNL is definitely the best part, like you get to see them interact in that like precarious, flirty um, like space that people are in when they don't really know each other and they get to know each other. They're in the offices of SNL, they're like in rehearsals on stage. There's even this scene that's like that I wish there was more of in the rest of the book where like he's supposed to be playing a younger tattoo-less version of himself in a sketch and so he kind of is like showing her his back like oh do you think I should uh, ask the makeup department to hide this tattoo for me well obviously showing off how muscular his back is and it's like you kind of get that flustered of flirtation feeling and it's so much fun I also thought it was funny that like Noah is this like heartthrob who's known for having kind of famous hair and then at the end of the book he goes bald and that reminded me of Harry Styles and I like that. Some stuff that's more on the neutral part, I neither like nor dislike this, is that it's so heavily inspired by real people. I'm not gonna stand here and pretend that I have any kind of moral qualms about real person fiction because I read One Direction fan fiction for 10 years, so I don't have a leg to stand on here, but sometimes it was a bit heavy-handed, like her co-worker who dates like female celebrities um, is very obviously Pete Davidson and his girlfriend is very obviously Ariana Grande like down to the voice acting that sounds like a parody of Ariana Grande like fascinating then we can go into the stuff that I didn't like which let's start with something small but that is actually emblematic of a lot of problems that I have with this book is that they made up a fake name for the fake Saturday Night Live show called The Night Owls or like TNO and it so doesn't roll off the tongue and it's so ugly on the page and it's like wait you did so much research into SNL and like you come up with a name that's not funny it's not smart it's not like a wink wink cheeky thing it's just like clunky and so that leads into the next thing that I didn't like is that it wasn't funny um like we get to read a few sketches and like get a peek into the humor of Sally. Her humor is basically like, oh, did you know that uh, women fart and shit and have bodily functions too? And also, did you know that balls and dick? It's like, is this supposed to be like subversive feminist humor? I don't know. Like something that made me laugh, but I'm not sure it's supposed to be funny, is that she has a list on her desk of words that have been censored by the network and it's just like pussy, wet, cunt, pink. And then besides that list, she has a picture of her with Hillary Clinton, which is so... like, it's this level of cringe. Like, it's one thing to acknowledge that like TV and broadcast TV doesn't really allow topics that are that could be considered like sexual it's one thing even on late night tv like that's one thing but it could have been like almost cool and edgy but she had to add like the cringe millennial hillary clinton worship like and i'm not i'm not immune to millennial cringe like i'm a cusper i'm a zillennial i was molded by buzzfeed feminism but i i'm out of that i've been through it i'm over it like can we move on please and it's so sad because 
so it's not funny, but at least the first part is like fun and flirtatious, and then it gets completely dragged down by the fucking pandemic being in this novel, and it serves no purpose at all because the two protagonists are people in the entertainment industry who just like did fuck all during quarantine so it has no actual purpose and it leads to like about a hundred pages of email exchanges that are not good and if you watched my last video you know that i believe in the potential the romantic potential of email but these emails they're so bad they read like a job interview noah and sally have no personality they're just like five instagram infographics in a trench coat like these emails are just a laundry list of reasons why they're good people. Like, um, here's my dating history, here's my childhood trauma, here's my adult trauma, um, here's an opinion that makes me like a decent person because I don't like Trump, and I spread BLM and I wear a mask, which are good things in themselves. But there's literally a point in the novel where the character is like, oh, I attended the BLM protest in a non-performative way. And it's like, this is possibly the most performative way to acknowledge Black Lives Matter in your novel. Like, that was bad. It was so boring, like they just info dumped their backstories via email. Who does that? Like, what I want in romance is protagonists to have like a back and forth of mutual discovery. But here it's like we have disclosure without vulnerability. This doesn't really cost them anything, there's no ambiguity, there's no friction or tension or anything like that. It's so boring. And also, it only spans two weeks. Two weeks of like a hundred pages of emails that don't have a shred of warmth or like human connection in them, and we're supposed to believe that this is after two years of not seeing each other, that they had a connection and attraction that was so strong that after two years this endured please no i do not buy that and it's even harder to buy the romance between them because the male love interest noah the harry styles knockoff is so bland i mean i say that he's a harry styles knockoff because he's just so smooth and not in a like seductive or hairless way he's media trained he sounds media trained like him saying that he sneakily non-performatively went to a BLM protest is directly lifted from Harry Styles life and I hate that I know this but I know this even when he's behind the scenes in the like most intimate setting possible of like the bedroom he sounds media trained as hell he's always saying the right thing always reassuring her always being understanding and like putting his frustration and his irritation after whatever she feels and it's boring there's no tension there like besides being hot what does he offer like he's such a passive agent and just a vessel for sally to pour her insecurity into and she has so many insecurity like of course the main character of a romance novel is going to be insecure about something but he feels like it's just driven by that noah has no desires of his own really and sally is just like insecure and doesn't believe that she could actually attract a super hot international star which whatever it's fine but that's basically the only conflict in the entire book when you see the same situation of her getting insecure and him reassuring her over and over again this is tiring like, like stop it and it's weird like she's a woman in her late 30s who's had a previous marriage and she's supposed to be a feminist, but it doesn't really show at all in how she lives or how she behaves. Like, And of course, every person has cognitive dissonance. It doesn't always live according to their values. But the lack of consistency here is actually kind of worrying. She claims to do like feminist um, comedy and to want to write feminist uh, rom-com screenplays. But the only women that she actually respects are other comedy writers and her mother. Like, she's always looking down on, like, the Irene Grande girl. And she's always looking down on, like, Noah's exes who are models. And she, like, the reason that it didn't work out in the first part is because she basically insulted his intelligence by saying that, like, he couldn't be that deep because he dated models. Like, and I'm not saying that it's groundbreaking to say, like, women can be hot and smart. Like, just watch the Barbie movie. But, like, it's 
pretty like not like other girls to have a protagonist who consistently looks down on women who she deems as like shallow and the worst part is that it's kind of vindicated by the narrative like at some point Noah tells her that he was always bored and didn't feel like stimulated in his in his other relationships which is just like you're not like other girls but updated for the modern world and she's not just mean to other women she has a lot of unaddressed internalized misogyny and it's not bad but it's presented in a way that I think we're supposed to find cheeky and endearing. She spends so much of her time thinking and strategizing around her ability to shave or clean or be like presentable to have sex. And it's weird, like you're telling me a woman who's had a previous marriage, who's in her late 30s, is afraid to have like hairy, sweaty sex. I don't know, maybe I'm just projecting, but it's kind of sad. I hope I'm not that hung up about like my own body when I'm almost 40, you know? And I think the biggest cognitive dissonance in the book is the fact that it spends so much time talking about how she addresses female bodily function in her comedy and it spends so much time explaining to us her hair removal and hygiene and grooming rituals. And then it's like, not interested at all in sex. It's like, oh, they kissed and then they had sex three times and it was great. And it's like, really? You know, romance doesn't need sex to be good. Like, it really doesn't. But if you're gonna make me go through all of these fucking boring pandemic emails, all of this fucking hair removal thing, and the fucking jokes about dick and balls and pussy, and then you're gonna be like, wait, no sex. It's like, okay, so interesting interesting you kind of hate me as a reader like you're at this point you're just at this point you're not subverting anything you're just failing to pay off the things that you set up in my opinion like that's not a mark of respect for the reader but what do i know and i feel like this so extends into the politics of the book because of course i'm making everything about politics but it's a book that has just gigantic cognitive dissonance at its core like it wants to be like a thoughtful pandemic elevated romance novel about like finding love in the entertainment industry in your late 30s which is essentially a hopeless place and then you still get the like billionaire fantasy of like your boyfriend sweeping in with the private jet when you need to go like take care of your loved ones and like of course, you know, I wouldn't say no to a private jet if I was fearing for my family's life. Like, I've taken a plane for way less than that. But it's like, the book just wants to have its cake and eat it too. Like, you're setting up Noah as this kind of, like, ultra-therapized, uh, ethical celebrity who's, like, a feminist and cares about, like, um, people or whatever. And then you still want to have him be, like the billionaire boyfriend with the private jet like what do you want what do you want like ugh, this felt like such an empty novel and just it's so symptomatic of the like liberalism of the author and i know i can say that because i read harry styles fan fiction but she wrote hillary clinton fan fiction which is way more unhinged in my opinion and she published it and like oh she also wrote laura bush fan fiction which is insane to me i almost want to read it to see how unhinged it actually gets but i'm not usually a like hate read person i don't hate read on purpose at least for example i thought i would like this and i ended up hating it so i think reading interviews with the author made me understand more that she really wasn't trying to write a romantic comedy. She mostly researched SNL and its history and how it works. And uh, she references many, many sketches. But she barely references like rom-coms or even romance novels. Like only, only some of the ones that we all know through cultural osmosis. Like when Harry met Sally and stuff. And then when you write a rom-com, like you're trying to be funny, you're trying to be romantic. There is no romance sensitivity. There is no empathy or understanding for the romance reader and its expectations. There's just a desire to subvert without knowing even what it wants to subvert. And you know, I'm not saying that the reader's expectations are king or whatever. 
because I'm wary of going into a book with my expectation and judging it based on that and not meaning the book where it's at. But this book is called Romantic Comedy. So I'm going to assess it on the romance, on the comedy, and we've already said it's not funny. I think it really lacks a sense of vulnerability. Like, I feel like a good romance main character has to be, like, touching and kind of wounded and insecure in ways that we can't help but love and identify with. Like, yeah, Sally is insecure, but it's basically just for the plot. I feel like my favorite romance protagonists have a layer of self-doubt that goes beyond the thing that makes the relationship hard. Like, for example, I think Emily Henry books are so interesting because the main character's entire worlds are on the brink of something new. Like, they're going through whole life transformations and they are growing as characters, but also growing into these relationships. And here, I feel like the characters are just going through the motions and getting into a relationship, but it's not earned. Like, there's no growth they're not changing throughout the story. The only change is that at the end, they're together and they weren't at first. I don't know, a romance novel is supposed to make you laugh and cry and like, it's an experience of the senses. Like you're supposed to get the vicarious butterflies and you're supposed to feel like you're in that space of vulnerability with the main character. It's not so much intellectual, it's more like poetry. It's not about what you're trying to say, but how you're going to say it and how you're going to make your reader feel. And I didn't feel that at all. I think Sittenfeld wasn't in a position to write that novel, that novel that could have been a great romance, because she wasn't interested in the romance. She wanted to honor something that was like SNL and that legacy of like comedy writing. And she wanted to look at the sketch idea and just look at the what if, but not really fleshing out who these characters are and why they're drawn to each other. And I guess as a reader of romance, that's not very interesting to me. And yeah, I guess I wanted to do this run review because this book pissed me off so much that I had to journal about it. And I thought it was pretty mid. And then I went to the internet and like, I found that like reviewers and publications were praising it as if it was an elevated form of romance and kind of annoyed me because when they were saying elevated they were really meaning toned down. I feel like western cultural criticism is allergic to emotional maximalism and it's a, it's like unacceptable to be just a romance novel or just a musical or just a slasher. You have to hedge it and subvert and tone it down and water your work for it to be considered of having any artistic value or even like human value. And I hate it. Like it's such a poisoning of the fun of reading and engaging with media. Like I want to have fun. I want to laugh and yearn and cry and like, yeah, maybe read about proceeding and emotional growth. Like, I don't know. Is that too much to ask? And like, yeah, maybe it is too much to ask. Like, yeah, that said, if you have recommendations for books that are like adult coming of age stories with orgasms, I will take them gladly. Please leave them in the comments. And if this all goes according to plan, this video is getting published on Valentine's Day. So happy Valentine's Day. I'm gonna go ahead and assume that you're not celebrating with your beloved if you're watching this video. If you are, that's kind of cute, actually, like, oh, that's cute. Just leave a comment and let me know. Yeah, it'd be cool to discuss in the comments, like, the idea of elevated genres and genres that are seen as, like, too lowbrow or mainstream to be accepted on their own. And yeah, thank you for watching. I will see you in the next one. Bye! <laughs>